hello you guys how are you all doing welcome back to my channel in today's video i want to review my dishwasher this one right here and as i do that i'm also going to take you through some of the things i was considering while i was deciding which one to get so that if you're there and you're shopping for one maybe you'll get some tips and some pointers as to what to consider while getting a dishwasher and then before i continue let me just say this video is not sponsored i am just a mama who wanted to increase her productivity so i went out and got myself a dishwasher so the video is not sponsored so i hope that you will watch until the end there's a lot of good stuff coming we are going to talk about the amount of energy and water that it uses and how much i pay for that so stay tuned So here it is, this is how it looks, it's grey in colour, the control panel is black with some silver part all around it and the brand is Mika. So one of the things to consider while getting a dishwasher is the capacity. So this one is a 14 place setting. I'm able to fill it up with a load every single day, so it's perfect for us. Another thing that I was considering is the efficiency, the energy efficiency. So this one is a triple A, which is the highest uh, efficiency. Then this one has a 10 year warranty on the motor. So another thing that I was looking out for is the noise level. I wanted a quiet, quiet dishwasher and I managed to get one. This one comes in with 42 decibels. You see that? Now I'm going to show you the inside of the dishwasher. So this is the door. To open it, you just pull it out like so and it opens just like that. So this dishwasher comes with three racks, the bottom rack, the upper rack, and the cutlery rack. So I'm going to start uh, with the cutlery rack. I'll show you uh, what it does. It is very flexible. But before that, I'm going to show you something that is up here on the roof of the dishwasher. So I'm going to try get my camera up there to see whether I can capture it. It's a spray arm. It's a smaller spray arm. It looks more like a sprinkler. So I want to show you that and then we'll get to the racks. So this, this is what I'm talking about. This is the the spray arm or the sprinkler that is up here so actually this is one of the things that i really wanted in a dishwasher i did not want one that comes with a basket a cutlery basket there are those dishwashers which have baskets so the, you have to put the basket on the lower rack so it occupies space on the lower rack and i didn't want that i wanted an independent rack where i can put my forks my knives my spoons and all that so this is it um, and what i love about this is that it is so flexible some some you'll find they're just flat and that's it but this one has a lot of flexibility one of the things i'll show you is that it has these rails it has a rail here that you can slide this part so these are two parts there's this one and there's this one so you can play around with them so for instance, I can slide this upward to slant it. So now it's in a slanting position. So now both of them are slanting. Now when they're slanting like this, it creates a dip in the middle. And this dip allows me to load uh, larger items. So like these small bowls, they're small, but for this rack, they are quite big because this is a cutlery rack. It's for spoons and knives, but I can be able to put these bowls here so i can arrange them like that and i'll still be able to close or to slide the rack inside with no problem see it goes out it goes in very smoothly and the bowls will be washed and they'll be clean there's no problem so that's one of the functions that i really love about this 
um, rack. Another thing that I love, now it's in slanting position. If I wanted the, the two parts to be flat, I can do that by sliding this out and down and then now it's flat. And then I can do that on the other side by sliding this up and to the side. And now it's flat, so it, it has level. So this one is slightly above this one. And because of that, I can be able to slide this one to this side. And now I have space over here. So if I hide on this lower rack, uh, the rack below this one, if I had uh, larger items like taller items that required space, this is a way to create space for that. So if I slid it in and there were bigger items here, which the, I mean taller items, they would have space. So you see they would have space here. So the other thing that this rack does is not only can you slide this out, I mean to the side you can also take it out completely yeah just like that so there you go and then also some dishwashers will come without the spray arm here like the top spray arm some will just have two spray arms uh, so that's another thing to look out for for me I really wanted when I found out that there are dishwashers that have a top spray arm and I did I went out looking for one so it was something I was considering the next thing that I'm going to show you is the upper rack so this is it this is how it looks so this is where you place uh, your cups your glasses your bowls and your saucers it has this uh, foldable tines they are not the spiky tines these ones are wavy ones so it's just a small one and a big one they assist you when you're loading your dishwasher depending on the items that you have you can either have them up like that or you can have them down to maximize on the space and then you have this part here so this one you use it when you have stem glasses so I'll show you with this as an example so if you have a glass like this one wine glasses champagne glasses you would put it here to keep it from uh, hitting other glasses to prevent breaking. So that's how you would arrange them. And when you don't have the stem glasses and you have cups down here, which maybe they keep moving and hitting each other, you put it down like this to hold the cup so that they can stop moving. When you don't have that problem, then you can just lift it up, leave it like that. For this rack has two levels, so it has an upper level and a lower level. So to take this to the upper level, you just lift it up and it locks in position. So that's an upper level. And to release it, you just use the handles, these blue handles here. You just lift them up like so. It releases the tray, um, I mean the rack, and the rack goes down. So you just lift it up like so to take it up to that level and then release it to take it down. So this is one of the features that I wasn't willing to compromise on. Um, I really wanted a rack that has two, two to three levels. Some have three, some have two, and some have one. They're just locked in the one position that they have. So I wanted one that I can change the posi position so that in case I have uh, larger items on the bottom rack, then I can be able to lift this up to create space because what happens is if you have larger items on the lower rack and they interfere with the spray arm, you see, if they hit the spray arm, then the spray arm will not be able to rotate. So it needs space to rotate, meaning if it doesn't rotate, it means that you won't spray water on all your dishes and then some dishes will not get cleaned. So this is the spray arm. This is the second spray arm. It, it is, it's a bigger one and it rotates 360 degrees. So it goes all the way around. So another thing, the other thing is this rack. So this is the bottom rack. Um, it has uh, two sets of tines. So they are these ones that are foldable. So you can fold them down like so to create more space. 
and these ones these ones are not foldable so they are set in this position so this is the rack where you would put your plates and your pots and pans then it's this one is removable once you pull it out you can lift it up so you can actually take it out if you don't need it so this is the base of the dishwasher underneath the base is the heating element and then on the uh, on here we have the spray arm the last spray arm so this is the third spray arm and then we have a filter this is the filter to release it you just twist it and pull it out so that you can clean it you're supposed to clean it clean this often mine needs a bit of cleaning it's a bit dirty so i'll be cleaning that but not right now and it's in three parts so there's this filter then there's this part and this is also a filter so to put it back together just put this here and then that there lock it in place like that and then place it back in and lock that's it it's locked in place then this one is the the salt container or the salt reservoir so this is where you put in salt i'm going to fill it up with some salt in a minute i want to show you what is on the door first so on the door we have this part this is a soap dispenser to close it you just pull it down after you've put your soap here whether powder or uh, pods then you put it here and then you close it like that and to open it you just slide this lock to the side and it flips open then this one is the rinse aid uh, reservoir so to open it you just pull this part up you pour your rinse aid right there and you lock it like that also i'm running low on rinse aid so i'm going to be filling this up right now so rinse aid helps to prevent water droplets from uh, or watermarks uh, forming on your dishes especially glasses it helps the dishes to come out clean and sparkly and then the the salt uh, helps to soften the water especially if you live in a place with hard water then you really need the salt in the dishwasher because it softens the water it removes the minerals that would otherwise interfere with your dishwasher this is the dishwasher salt that i'm going to use it's fiber salt so you're not supposed to use any other kind of salt just dishwasher salt so this is one kg but this reservoir can fit uh 1.5 kgs the last time i put salt in this thing was when i bought it back in may and it lasted me six months so there So if it didn't have water, you see it's full to the brim with water. So it did, the first time that I did this, I had to add water. So this time I guess I won't be needing to add any water in here because I can see it's already full. So then you lock it tight. Then after you put salt, you should run a load to, because the salt is corrosive. You should not leave it like now you see i can see some salt particles that have fallen on the base so i should run a load so that it can all be cleaned up so we are going to be doing a load after we are done with all this then this is the rinse aid that i'm using right now so this is the one that i was using before ecozone i used this once it was over i got this one so this is ecova so I'm just going to fill this up. Mm -hmm. 
the next thing we are going to look at is the control panel so this is the control panel this is the power button i hope that you can see it well so when you press on the power button the control panel lights up there are three icons here which uh, indicate when there's a problem in the machine so there's the rinse aid icon salt icon and then there's a faucet to show uh, water when there's a problem with water so i'll try uh, and switch off the machine and then power it on again so that you can see they light up for a second and then they go off so when i power when i switch it off like so and i switch it on so these three icons is what i'm talking about let me do that again so there you go the three icons so those three icons uh, would indicate when there is no rinse aid in the dishwasher then the rinse aid icon would stay on when there is no salt the salt icon would stay on when there is prob a problem with water maybe you you've already started your machine but you haven't turned on the water or maybe the pressure of the water is too low that faucet would come on to show you that the dishwasher is running but there's no water going into the machine so after that we have now the programs these are the available prog programs we have auto intensive universal eco uh, glass uh, when i press that i selected glass glass and then we have a uh, quick wash which is 90 minutes and rapid and then we have soak so to select the program you just press on this uh, program the word program here when you press on it it selects the next program so you just press there eco runs for three hours and 18 minutes and it's the most um energy and water efficient so even though it seems like it's long it also uses it uses the less the least amount of energy and water so it's actually the best to use so from the programs we have this screen this is the one that displays the time then on this side we have uh, from here to here this box we have the functions so these functions you can pair them with the programs so let's say for instance you have selected the intensive um, uh, program which is the longest uh, this is the power wash if you select that then you have combined intensive with power wash uh, but it will increase the time so the power wash increases the time from 3 hours and 25 minutes to 3 hours and 40 minutes if you combine it if you press the this word function again it goes to the next the next function which is turbo wash turbo wash cuts down the time the wash time so from 3 hours and 25 minutes the wash time has been cut down to 1 hour and 45 and 40 minutes so that that it's turbo not turbo wash turbo speed so it cuts down the wash time yes and then the other function is we have is the automatic door open when this icon is selected the door automatically opens when the machine is done washing to let out uh, humidity so if you don't want that to happen then you press it you press the function button for three seconds and you turn it off so when you turn it off what happens is that you increase the wash time so when the dishes are drying with the door locked or with the door closed they use more time when you press it when you turn it on then the time reduces so this one is uh, indicates half load so if you wanted to wash dishes on the upper rack only or on the bottom rack only you use this alt button to select so this one toggles between the upper and the lower then the other option we have is the delay so you can delay your start time by uh, 1 to 24 hours so you can delay it when you press the delay button this clocks the, this clock lights up and on the screen you see the hour you can go all the way to 24 hours the other thing that we have here and i think is the last thing is this padlock right here so that's the chart lock so when you press these two buttons together the alt and the delay the that padlock lights up meaning that now um 
the control panel has been locked. The child lock does not lock the door, so the door, the door doesn't lock. Even when your machine is washing, you can still open it mid-cycle. Another thing that I really wanted in a dishwasher is memory so that the dishwasher can remember where it left off in case of a power outage. The memory on this one is not perfect. Sometimes it goes back to where it left off and sometimes it, it goes back a little further than where it left off. So now I'm going to load up the dishwasher. So when loading up your dishwasher, you do not necessarily need to rinse off your dishes. If your dishes have excess food, you can just scrape them off and then load them up in the dishwasher. Another thing to ensure is uh, that your dishes, your cups, your bowls, your glasses, you place them facing downward so that they can be washed. Otherwise, if they are facing upward, the uh, water is going to collect uh, inside and they are not going to be washed. Another thing is to make sure that they are not uh, overlapping. So don't place one dish on top of another because if you do that, the one that is on top is not going to get washed. And also uh, for cups or bowls and other items that have a dome at the top, they have like a dip at the top, water collects there. So it's uh, important to make sure that they are slanting so that uh, water does not collect inside. For plates and spoons, you should always make sure that there is some space in between them. Make sure they are not touching because if they are, then they are not going to wash properly. And as you can see here, the slanting function of this tray allows me to put larger items in the middle and they will still wash perfectly. Some of the things that you shouldn't put in the dishwasher are wooden items because over time they may crack due to high temperature. The water is, uh, the dishwasher uses around 50 to 65 degrees while washing so they might be affected by the temperature and crack. Another thing is insulated things like flasks because they lose the insulation due to the high temperature. You can wash aluminium pots in the dishwasher, but I choose not to do mine in the dishwasher. I hand wash them because they lose, when I put them in the dishwasher, they lose the shine uh, and I like mine shiny and they become dull and get this brownish color. I know there is somebody out there who wants to know the cost of running this machine in terms of power. So the, the cycles that I use, the programs that I use on a daily normally use less than one unit of power. Actually I use Eco very often. It uses the least amount of power which is 0 0.765 units and a unit of power right now goes, out, uh, goes for 25 to 26 shillings here in Kenya. Correct me if I'm wrong but I also I do also use other programs so when I do my calculations and according to the bill that we receive every month I can see that my bill has gone up by around 600 to 700 shillings per month and for water our water bill did not go up at all it remained the same the water the cycles that I run normally use less than 12 liters of water so this machine is very water efficient I'm using Finnish Quantum Max uh, dishwasher tablets. They are three in one. They contain detergent, salt, and rinse aid. And for the program, I'll use Eco. It will run for three hours and 18 minutes. It's now midnight and I'm really sleepy. So I'll go to bed and I'll come back in the morning to show you how the dishwasher did. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on the time you're watching this video. For me, it's morning. Um, I've just woken up. You can tell by my voice. I just want to show you how the dishwasher did and then we can wrap up this video. So this is the top rack. This is how the performance was. The spoons are all clean and shiny. The plastic stuff the plastic items have some water on them like um, these spoons they all washed really well but they still have some water on them so plastics take longer to dry 
you can see it's clean you if you remember this dish was all brown now it's all clean so as i told you you can see uh the top uh, part of the 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 cups that have a dip it collects some water so as you can see most of these are have a, have some water droplets they are a bit wet you can see the plastic containers take some while takes a while to um to dry but they are all clean it did a really good job despite the slight wetness if you really want your dishes to be completely dry you can use a kitchen towel to wipe but for me it doesn't bother me much the plates are completely dry they dry really really fast if you remember this pot was also very dirty it's it's the one that i used to boil milk and it's all clean so that's it for this video i hope that you have enjoyed or maybe you have learned something uh, talk to me on the comment section if there's something i left out uh, or if you have more knowledge of on how to use dishwashers maybe you have some tips that you can share with us we are all learning so feel free to put it down on the comment section also if you have a question you can ask if i have the answer i'll i'll answer you and i'll see you in my next video bye bye